I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You don't need me to tell you that these are not easy times that we live in. Our world is filled with anxiety, danger, and fear, especially as we confront the newest variant of the coronavirus, and also all the effects of climate change. We grow weary of all these problems we are faced with, often losing hope that things can be different. We all could use a few miracles about now. C.S. Lewis writes about God's grand miracle. When Jesus came to us in the form of a tiny newborn, the Christ child becoming like us so that we might become like him. Since that first Christmas in Bethlehem so long ago, miracles continue to happen. God showing up in places we least expect. It was Christmas Eve in 1914, in the freezing trenches along the Western Front in Europe. The fighting had been underway for only a few months, enough time for the grim reality to set in that this would be a long and costly war. The soldiers, German, British, French, Belgium, all endured a miserable existence in the trenches, mired in freezing mud with inadequate supplies and equipment. The winter of 1914 was especially hard, which made it all the more horrific. At dusk on Christmas Eve, without warning, the British soldiers heard faint voices from across no man's land that interval of space between the warring trenches. This corridor ran for miles between the trenches and was sometimes as narrow as 30 yards. This allowed for soldiers to easily call out to each other, usually exchanging insults. However, on this Christmas Eve, something different was about to happen. As the voices got louder, it was clear that the Germans were singing Christmas carols. A few of the British soldiers began singing carols of their own. In time, the German soldiers planted candles along the edge of the trenches, and then small makeshift Christmas trees lit with candles were lifted up out of the German trenches one by one. Before long, a few brave souls stood up on each side and made their way to no man's land. They met their enemy face to face. No guns, no weapons. One soldier wrote about this in formal truth in his diary. He wrote, that evening, German heads suddenly popped up and started to sing. Each number ended with a round of applause from both sides. The Germans then asked the British to join in. At this point, one very mean-spirited British soldier shouted, we'd rather die than sing German, to which a German joked aloud, it would kill us if you did. As Christmas Day dawned, the soldiers rose early and many returned to no man's land. They talked, shook hands, traded food, tobacco, other items that had been sent from home. Some used this time to recover and bury their dead. Some played impromptu games of soccer with a makeshift ball made from a can. One German soldier who had been a barber before the war gave a much needed haircut to a British soldier. As the darkened skies brought an end to Christmas Day, this miracle of peace and goodwill in the midst of the carnage of war would remain in the hearts of many for generations to come. Truth be told, we all carry a no man's land within us. Each one of us here tonight is fighting our own battle of some kind, whether it is dealing with a devastating loss, 
a fractured marriage, deep regret, a serious illness, financial woes or bitter disappointments, no matter what it is, be assured that no one is exempt. Life can break our hearts and bring us to our knees. We are all in deep need of healing, finding the peace that passes all understanding. This can only happen when we dare to risk opening our hearts to receive the miracle of God's love. Christmas is about miracles, love breaking into our chaotic, crazy world in the most unlikely and humble way, transforming what was once fearful, broken, and decayed into something new, fresh, and whole. It is the miracle of a young teenager, not a penny or title to her name, unwed and homeless, giving birth to a baby named Jesus in the smelly animal stall, who against all rational thought becomes the savior of the entire world. Emmanuel, God with us. If you and I can see our very existence as a miracle in itself, then something incredible happens. We look at the world in a whole new way. We treat each other with a little more patience, a little more kindness. We begin to experience God's love the more we reach out to each other, especially those on the margins, those who are invisible to the rest of the world. And if we do, that is a miracle. You see, God's love is so abundant, so pervasive, it cannot be contained. We are compelled to share this divine love with others, becoming a miraculous conduit of grace and blessings to another. This is the miracle of Christmas. God coming to dwell amongst us and within us, no matter how messy life may seem. In Celtic theology, it is believed that when you look at the face of a newborn, you see the face of God. I have no doubt that Mary would agree. People darken the doors of St. Michael's for all sorts of reasons. Ultimately, I believe we are all motivated by one shared hope. We hope for the miracle of love in our lives, love that heals our soul, fills our heart, and gives our lives meaning and purpose. We find the love we yearn for in God's grand miracle, the birth of the Christ child. The soldiers on the Western Front found this miracle of love when no man's land was transformed into holy ground, where they greeted each other as brothers, not enemies. Tonight, you and I find this miracle of love born within us as we come together to celebrate the nativity of our Lord on this holy night. But this is only the beginning. Before you leave this sacred place tonight, I invite you to pray to be a miracle of love to someone else. Not on just this day, but every day. In time, we become the very thing we pray for, a bearer of God's peace, love, and goodwill, because Emmanuel, God is with us now and forever. Amen.